చాలా హఠ యోగ సో వై సో దర్ ఈస్ వై ఆసనాస్ ఆర్ దాన్ సో దట్ యూ విల్ బీ ఏబుల్ టు వాట్ యూ కాల్ బ్రింగ్ ది ప్రాణ ప్రాపర్లీ ఇన్ ద ప్రాపర్ నాడీస్ అపాన్ ఆల్సో యూ దాన్ ప్రాపర్లీ అండ్ దెన్ అల్టిమేట్లీ ఐ విల్ బీ ఏబుల్ టు యూ నైట్ బోత్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ హౌ టు డూ ఇట్ ద ఎంటైర్ హట యోగ టీచర్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ సిస్టమ్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ దే హెవ్ కమ్ అవుట్ విత్ ఎ వెరీ వెరీ లాబరేట్ సిస్టమ్ బై విచ్ ఐ విల్ బీ ఏబుల్ టు యూ నైట్ ప్రాణ అండ్ అపాన అండ్ టువర్డ్స్ దట్ దిస్ యోగ హట యోగ ఇస్ సో హట యోగ ఇస్ బేసికలీ వాట్ హ అండ్ ఠ ప్రాణ అండ్ అపాన యోగ మీన్స్ యూనియన్ ది యూనియన్ ఆఫ్ ప్రాణ అండ్ అపాన ఈస్ సపోజ్ టు బి అచీవ్ బై దిస్ పర్టికులర్ సిస్టమ్ అండ్ దెన్ వెన్ ది బోత్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ ఆర్ యునైటెడ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ కాల్ హట యోగ ఓకే దిస్ ఇస్ కాల్ హట యోగ so some people are very excited about it are very impressed by this and then they spend their entire lifetime do different postures do different uh, how do, how do they achieve this see prana is is above apana is below they try to bring both of them to the same spot how do they do uh, in the bhagavad gita he says pranam apane yukhvati some people push prana into apana apanam prane yukhvati pra, apana is pulled up so different when you do inhalation what happen the prana sthana goes down and then at that time when you do the what you call moola bandha and udyana bandha apana you raise up and ultimately they are able to bring both of them together they work very hard towards that and once they are able they become hatha yogis so in hatha yoga the basic approach is what you call bring to unite prana and apana and this what you call the methods that are available are what what are the basic techniques available asana pranayama and the mudras are you familiar with these terms prana you know asanas different asanas then they got the prana different pranayamas different kumbhakas and ultimately the different uh, you know what do you call the mudras which include the moola bandha udyana bandha jalandhara bandha and all that okay okay with, with this they are able to achieve this so hatha yoga is not merely asanas hatha yoga you will not be able to achieve hatha yoga at the union of prana and apana so one of the commentators for the hatha yoga pradipika he says hashchatasya hatha ha ha is prana tha is apana tayoho yoga yoga the union between these two is hatha yoga and he says that is pranayama basically it is pranayama working with the breath you are able to because prana and apana both of them are what different aspects of the breath so anybody who says that i am practicing hatha yoga if it doesn't spare you know spare a moment for breathing exercises many schools teach yoga they don't teach pranayama without pranayama there is no life in hatha yoga because that's the most essential aspect of uh, you know yoga at least hatha yoga you don't look uh, happy <laughs> all right so okay this is hatha yoga let me i don't have much time isn't it i got just one hour this is hatha yoga then there is another yoga called kundalini yoga i don't want to get into the details of that but basically what they what they say is there are two principles one principle called shiva tattva the other one is called the shakti tattva you know it is also in the microcosm it is in me, in me. shiva tattva is here in sahasrara at the bottom of the uh, sushumna nadi or at the bottom of the spine is this uh, uh, i don't want to get into controversy i'm just going to tell you to explain this from the point of view of yoga it is a shakti tattva it is coil three and a half uh, coils or eight uh, coils whatever and the whole approach of these people is to they want to the union between the shakti and shiva shakti and shiva so what do they do they arouse the kundalini and then force the or direct the kundalini to go through the sushumna ultimately it reaches the sahasrara where the union between shiva and shakti takes place how do they do it in so many it's a very very elaborate system some people say you can arouse it by mantra meditation alone some hatha yogis or people who do they use the bandhas certain asanas so that you can direct the uh, kundalini through the sushumna like that you know there are different uh, schools let's not get it. the ultimate goal of this is to bring the shakti and shiva now in this uh, in this union shakti will move shiva doesn't move you know he is he is there in the in the in the hatha yoga we we can move both prana and apana towards each other whereas in kundalini yoga you can't move shiva shiva is you know he is uh, he is in his uh, exalted position shakti will have to move uh, you know move to uh, move to sahasrara so they they have different procedures in fact what do this what does the abhyasi or the person who oh, you know who brings about the union of uh, shakti and shiva within his own uh, within his own system what does he get what does he or she get according to them according to the uh, according to shankara you know adi shankara have heard of adi shankara he has written a commentary he has written a work called saundarya lahari in which he talks about 
when this union takes place between Shiva and Shakti, the uh, experience, what you call the practitioner is able to experience immense bliss in all the nadis. All through the nadis, he is able to experience, uh, you know, ultimate bliss. So that is the kind of experience uh, the abhyasi is supposed to get. So like that, there are there is another system. So union between the Shakti Tattva and Shiva Tattva is supposed to be the goal of the uh, what do you call Kundalini Yogis. Okay. Then there is another important yoga where you know you the Jivatma is supposed to you know to 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 unite with Paramatma. This is we are all very familiar with this. I am the Jivatma. And then there is an ultimate, uh, you know, superior being. I would like to, you know, I would like to merge with him. So then there are uh, procedures. There, are, there is a meditation procedure, puja, mantras, and all that. That's the elaborate bhakti yoga is there, by which I am able to uplift myself and ultimately. And then union with the Lord also. There are different gradations: salokya, samipya, sayujya, sarup. Like the different. Uh, so this is an elaborate subject. Elaborate subject. Bhakti yoga is even there are two groups. One bhakti yoga, another one is sharanagiti. So in that case, what happens? I am one principle. Jivatma is one principle. Paramatma is one of the principle. The uh, what do you call it? the union has to take place. Then who is to move? Will the Lord move towards me, or I should move towards the Lord? Again, there are two schools. According to one school, you have got to keep on thinking about the Lord all through your life, like you know, like a like a monkey clings to the mother, you know, monkey, monkey, baby monkey, it clings to the mother, you know. So the responsibility is to cling to the mother because the mother monkey will be jumping from branch to branch, tree to tree. So I have to cling. If I'm careless, I will fall down. So the responsibility, all, so that is why constantly, all the time, you think of the Lord. So you keep, keep thinking about this is bhakti yoga. On the other hand, there are other groups who say Sharanagati. You just surrender yourself to the Lord, the Lord will come and take care of you. They give the examples of a kitten, you know, a cat. The cat, how does it take care of the kitten? As soon as, uh, what do you call the mother, the cat delivers of uh, the kitten, it carefully takes them and then keeps them aside so that, you know, you and I won't bother the kitten. So it's very careful. But who takes care of the kitten? It is a mother. What do the kitten do? They surrender themselves to the mother. The mother takes care of it. Okay, so this is the approach. So you surrender, you tell the Lord, okay, I surrender myself to you, the Lord will take care of you. So these, these are the two different, uh, you know, approaches in Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga is also a, a very, very popular, very, you know, used. So then finally, we'll come to the yoga that is propounded by Patanjali. You know, have you heard of Patanjali? Patanjali, you know, Patanjali, yeah. Yes. Patanjali has written a book and it is supposed to be, after you spend two or three years going to the yoga school, somebody will say, you know, there is a, there is a, you know, there is somebody called Patanjali, he has written a book, uh, you know, oh, Patanjali, Mr. Patanjali, okay, right. So then you say that Patanjali lived a number of years back or, you don't know. So you start slowly getting more and more interested in what the Patanjali has to say. So Patanjali has written a book called Yoga Sutra, you know, he has written a very, what you call cryptic uh, statements, and then it is supposed to give the entire, the entire scope of yoga. And then that, in fact, many people say that Patanjali has incorporated several other yoga into into this system. You know, somebody wanted to say these are the various uh, the, the different systems are there. Let us try to put them together, and ult ultimately, he also has got a slightly different goal than what uh, you know what uh, the other yogas are. Uh, Yoga, yoga systems are about. So in Patanjali Yoga Sutra, the main thing is, Patanjali says that it's an Adhyatma Vidya. Yoga is an Adhyatma Vidya. What is Adhyatma Vidya? Can you say something about Adhyatma Vidya? Atma, Atma means self. Adhyatma means my own self. It is for me. The yoga that is used entirely for my own self is called an Adhyatma Vidya. Yoga is an Adhyatma Vidya. So what does it say? What does it say? Everything that you got to know about your own self, your body, your mind, you know, with the way it functions, all of them we have to know. Ultimately, what what is the essential aspect of you, all these things will have to be known. So Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras calls this his system, the yoga, as the Yoga Sutra. It is Yoga Darshana, he says. And according to the general belief, Yoga Darshana of Patanjali is supposed to reveal yoga as it is stipulated, as it is mentioned in the Vedas. Okay, so it becomes a very, very old system and the Patanjali after some time because people keep on saying a lot of things about yoga 
he, have, he had to come, I mean, somebody had to come and say, no, 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 a lot of things which are not yoga has been included as yoga. Let us try to have one system. Let me try to tell you what yoga is all about. Anything that you find not contained in this is not yoga. That's what my guru used to say. And because there are so many, so many books, so many systems are there. How, how do I say which is good, which is not good? So, but my guru used to say, read the Yoga Sutras. Anything that is inconsistent with the Yoga Sutras, please be careful with, with the other practices. So long as they are consistent with the, the, what you call the teachings of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, you go ahead along with that. Otherwise, don't. So, some, we, need a, we need a Bible, okay? We need a Bible, just like, you know, you need a Bible to follow a particular religion. You need a Bible as yoga students to follow. Follow, okay? I have this one. This is not complete, naturally. Complete in the sense it is not very, very, what do you call it, very uh, descriptive. Then you've got to read the commentaries. Probably study, study with your teacher, and over a period of time, you'll be able to see what this uh, Yoga Sutras have to offer. And then, you know, you can, you can base your yoga life, yoga life, uh, based on Yoga Sutras. So, in the Yoga Sutras, the word yoga does not mean union. Yoga does not mean union. What does it mean? Because in Sanskrit, of course, in many languages, the same word can be derived from two different roots. Two different roots. While yoga is union, which is very popular. Is it very heavy today? <laughs> so I, Sunday morning, I <laughs> listen to all these things. But when, 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 can I, when, when else can we talk about it? Sometime or other, you know. Okay. Right, I'm not going to change. I'm going on in this direction. So, in the Yoga Sutras, Patanjali uses the word yoga, not yo yoga means union, but in a different root. Different root is yuja samadho. Yuja is another word, another root in yoga, which means samadhi. What is by samadhi? Samadhi, samadhi means, uh, yeah, samadhi is what. Uh, uh, yogis are supposed to be, and they close their eyes, they forget everything else, that's called samadhi. But you know, samadhi means samadhana, samadhi. Samadhana, all of us understand. What is samadhana? Absolute peace of mind. Absolute peace of mind. So yoga, according to Patanjali, is absolute peace of mind. When will my mind be absolutely peaceful? Is my mind peaceful now? No. Is your mind peaceful now? No. When will my mind be absolutely peaceful? When the mind knows who really I am. Until I know who really I am, what do I do? Because I don't know who really I am, I keep on doing a lot of things, you know, which are not necessary, which are not necessary. So Patanjali says that, first of all, try to know who really you are, and then try to find out what you want. Sometime whenever when you are young, what happens when you are 10 or 12 years, your father or uncle or somebody says, what do you want to be? I want to be this, I want to be that, I want... When you are 5, 6 years old, you are, what do you want to be? You want to be, uh, you know, locomotive driver, engine driver. When you are 10, you would like to be a truck driver. When you are 15, you would like to be a computer scientist. When you are 20, you would like to be a medical doctor. When you are 25, you've got no choice. You know, already you, you, so you've got to keep on doing whatever you have already, you know, landed into and then continue your life, you know. So, there what happens, there are two things we've got to understand according to the Yoga Sutras. That is, our basic desires, uh, basic desires are the same whether it is you or me or anybody, the basic desire is the same. What is the basic desire? I want to be happy. I don't want to be unhappy. You take anybody. So what do we do? I do not know what will make me happy. So what do I do? I say, okay, this made me happy some time back. So I try to do that. After some time, it doesn't make me happy. So I try to do something else. I keep on trying. It's a question of trial and error, hit and miss. And right through the life, it is a trial and error and hit and miss. We are not able to really find out what will make me happy. On the other hand, there is also another thing. I don't want to be unhappy. So what do I do? I try to do everything so that, you know, I won't be unhappy. So if I get a lot of money, I won't be happy, unhappy. So I try to make a lot of money. So there are do. So this they call it as pravritti and nivritti. Pravritti means activities that you do to make yourself happy, to get something. You know, when you go in your, to a meeting, you see somebody whom you like, so what do you do? You go towards that particular person to talk to. On the other hand, if you see somebody whom you don't like, you run away from that particular person. Okay, this is called pravritti and nivritti. We try to do what we want. We try to avoid what we don't, what does not give us happiness. So these are the two things that we do. Hmm? Yeah. 
So these are the two things. These are the two things. Pravrti and Nivrti. So this, until I know what really I want, the, the, the whole, what you call, premise of Patanjali Yoga Sutra is, we do not know what really we are. Why is it we don't know what we want? Because we don't know, we do not know who really we are. So, from this point of view, he says, understanding the true nature of one's own self is, once you know who really you are, then you will not be going about doing the way we go about doing these things. So, towards this end, the, he, Patanjali, normally what do we do? I am that I am I am an individual occupying a small space, uh, you know, in the universe, and the rest is uh, rest is the uh, rest are all objects, you know. So far as I am concerned, everything other than me are all objects. I am the subject. I am the subject. Everything else is object. But if you really start analyzing, I am not merely the subject. I consist something of the object also because I am able to see my own self. I am able to see my own body. I am able to feel my own body. So I am slightly different from what I normally considered myself to, I mean, what I consider to be myself. So I think, uh, I think I should stop at this. No, it's fine. You see what I am trying to say? Yes, yes. Right. Okay. So, so, they, so they try to go, you know, there are so many different methods they wish they say that, you know, uh, ultimately they try to say that, you are uh, you are the self you are the self pure non changing consciousness and then whatever you see can be reduced to chittavritti whatever i experience is reduced to chittavritti when i see you what what happens you know when i see the whole eh, light falls on you and then it is reflected it goes through my you know it uh, hits the retina retina converts into electrical impulses it goes to the brain there is a center where it is able to see and they say they interpret. Then once it goes to the brain, what does it do? Again, not only the other senses also send their inputs, all the inputs are collated, and then there is one, one agency which is able to coordinate all these things, which they call it as manas. In addition to this, um, I got the five karmendriyas, I which I operate when I drive the car, I use my senses, I also use my, what do you call it, use my karmendriya. So all these things will have to be done by a particular uh, so, moment after moment, there is a chitta vritti. The mind has to, to throw a different picture. Right at this moment, one picture. An hour later, there will be another picture. Next moment is another picture. So, each picture, each uh, thing that I am experiencing at this moment. So, what do I experience now? I not only experience that all of you are sitting in front of me, I also experience that I am sitting here and talking. So, my chitta vritti consists not only the outside object, but also consists of me sitting here and talking. So, I am also part of the object. You, you, it's one way of understanding. One way of understanding is, I am also part of the, whatever I consider to be myself, is a form of the object. And Patanjali conveniently puts the entire thing as Chitta Vrti. Chitta Vrti, because the mind will have to project it. If the mind doesn't project it, I can't see this. And who sees this? And there is a principle called Purusha, or a consciousness principle, that is able to see this. So, at the, uh, so this is what they try to tell you in the Yoga Sutras. First of all, Try, rather than identifying I, ourselves with this body as a person, they call it drishyatma. Drishyatma means that which is seen as the individual. Okay, how, supposing you, you say, um, um, uh, say, who are you? I am so and so, I weigh so many pounds, I am so, so old. You know, we, 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 what do you call it? We put this particular person as the self, this is called drishyatma, seen self. Something is that is, but then drashta, the one that is able to see everything that is going on, very easy to understand the, the principle of purusha, because if you say everything I experience is part of the chitta varti. There are two things, instead of saying that Ramaswami here is the subject and all others are objects here, I would say, Patanjali says, no, let us put it this way, Ramaswami does not see everything else, without the use of the chitta become showing a chitta varti, projecting a chitta varti. And the chitta varti includes this particular person also as part of the whole thing. Am I struggling? Yes. Okay. So that chitta varti is the object and there is a purusha which is seen. So once you are able to, what do you call, start getting interested in this, I know, after some time you will forget about it, but sometimes what people come back, okay, okay, there is something something interesting the whole thing, let us come back. And over a period of time, you develop more and more interest, it takes time. So the first time that you hear, the first time you try to understand, the, the understanding that, that you get is, is called the, what do you call, that is called the, what do you call, aparoksha, I mean, paroksha. Paroksha means through somebody else. I say something, 
something falls into your ears and if you have not heard about it earlier, okay, there seems to be something this, uh, this fellow has to say and then you start thinking about it. So that understanding that you get by listening to somebody else or reading the Yoga Sutra is called uh, uh, Paroksha, then what do you do? You keep on thinking about it. So, so far we had never thought on these things. All the time I've been thinking, I'm so and so, what should I do to make myself happy? Can I go to go to this restaurant? Can I go to the other restaurant? Can I meet this person? Can I meet that person? Can I change my job? This is how we go about trying to make myself happy. Now we say that you know, there is a different way of looking at the whole thing. So what do you do whenever you've got spare time? Whenever, you know, you are not having, a, you, are, you, are, you are left alone by your spouse, then what do you do? You can start thinking on these lines. You slowly start thinking about it because constantly there is a distraction. The moment you get up in the morning, you are distracted. The whole, we don't have to go outside the house to be distracted. The distraction is in the house itself. We get distracted immediately. There's no time. By the time you go to sleep, you're still under stage of distraction. There's no really, no time for me to sit down, contemplate or meditate, let us say. Okay, so if this happens, then after some time, you are convinced, oh yes, I go through the Yoga Sutras, you know, with a the, with the, with the, with the microscope, with a, what do you call it? Uh, with a with a with a comb, you know, analyze it because sutra just just separate them. Ah, then you understand. Okay, this is what this bloke has to say. This is something interesting. I have never thought on these lines. Nothing wrong with that. Why is it I did not think about it? All the people I have been moving around with have not thought on this. My father never told me anything. My wife doesn't tell me. My children, my friends, nobody talks on these lines. How will I know? My friends, everybody talks on different things. Hey, well, let's go to this restaurant, this is good, a new restaurant has come, a new building has come, you know, like that we keep on, you know, why don't we go to Paris for a few days, we got more money. Like that we keep on trying to find out ways to make ourselves happy, so we don't think on these lines. So, after manana, manana is the second stage, pratyaksha anumana rather, manana or anumana, and ultimately you are able to, suddenly able to see what they are talking about. It's very conveniently, he particularly reduces, the object is chittavarti, the subject is purusha. Now I think Ramaswami is the subject, the outside world are the objects. This will have to be changed into the object is not, because the object is not known to me unless it is converted into Chittavarti. Am I right? So when you look at your Chittavarti, Chittavarti is not confined to what you see from outside, but includes you also as part of the Chittavarti. I am able to, I am able to feel that I exist here, isn't it? So, and then there should be a conscious principle that is able to observe the chitta. So that they call it as you. So ultimately what happens when we are able to realize that, the purusha, what does the purusha or the, the consciousness within us, it keeps on watching the chitta vritti moment after moment after moment. It doesn't change. The chitta vritti is changed, but the purusha does not change. If the purusha does not, then what am I doing? What am I doing? What, why, why am I doing all these things? If the purusha is not going to change at all, Whatever I do, whatever be the chitta varthi, in either does it make it happy or unhappy, why should I waste my time doing all these things? So that is what the yogi does. Ultimately, he reaches a stage called Kaivalya. Absolutely, the mind is very, very peaceful. That's called chitta varthi nirodha. Mind becomes absolutely peaceful. So the word yoga here, when, the, when will the mind become absolutely peaceful? When it knows the truth. That's what happens. This is a very important thing. We are always the mind until I know what the truth is, until I know what my neighbor is doing, you know. My mind is not, I have to know. I have to know what is going on in my neighbor's house. I have to know what goes on in my boss's room. Everything I have to know. I am curious, I am curious. But I am not curious about who really I am. Once I am able to know who really I am, then the mind will come to, oh yes, I know the truth. I know the truth about myself. I am pure consciousness. I don't need anything to make it happy. Whatever I do, if I make a million dollars, it doesn't change. If you lose a million dollars, it doesn't change. It, it remains there, it just merely sits and watches. So this they try to explain in the Yoga Sutras and Sankhya Karika and all that. So instead of considering them as some kind of a weird philosophy, once you try to relate it to your own experience, then you'll start developing some kind of a respect for these things. So once I know what the ultimate uh, truth is, then what happens? My mind, because of its samsara habit, it keeps on working in the old way it, is, it, it, it has been doing. So I got to do, then I start using yoga. That is why Patanjali does not stop merely by telling what the ultimate truth is, but he also tells you what are the various things that you have got to do so that the mind will be remaining, you know, because the mind cannot concentrate easily because it is used to distraction. My mind is used to distraction on a day-to-day -day basis. 
if I want my mind to concentrate, I got to develop that particular tendency to concentrate. So that's why Yoga Sutra, they call in the, in the, in the Vyasa Bhashya, Sarva Bhauma Chittasya Dharma. The Chitta has got five different dharmas. Kshiptam, Mudham, Kshiptam, Yekagram, Nirudham. The mind is capable of, you know, what you call, uh, Kshipta, you know, fractured mind. You know, some people have got fractured mind. You can't reason with them. Mudha, Mudha means complete, Mudha, you know, in Tamil, Mudha, you know, Mudha, Mudha means completely infatuated. You know, Mudha means completely infatuated. I don't look at anything else. I, only the senses have got control over me. You know, they're called Mudha. Vikshipta are people like us. Sometimes we go about, sometimes when we start worrying about, why is it, you know, there seems to be something more? I may missing something. This is a question that starts coming to many people. I may be very comfortable, rich, you know, very successful and all that, but still there is an underlying, you know, unhappiness. So that will drive me to, uh, that's why most people start reading all these things, you know, trying to find out is there anything else. So that is the called Vikshipta. Vikshipta stage is the stage where most of the yogis come from. The starting point is Vikshipta. If you are a Mudha, no, you, are, you will not, no, you, you won't listen to that. If you are a Kshipta, you can't, I can't talk to you. In the Vikshipta stage, you are able to, you start looking around, okay, you start looking around. Then, once you are in the Vikshipta stage, you do, Vikshipta is a manifestation of a guna called Rajas. So, in the Vikshipta stage, you do a lot of these yoga activities, your asana, pranayama, pratyahara, you know. Once you do that, slowly the Vikshipta starts coming down. You are able to concentrate more and more. And then, once my mind is able to, you know, change from a, what you call, a default condition of Vikshipta to a stage of Ekagara, if I'm able to remain focused, focusing is a habit, you know. So, some people able, are able to focus very well, some people are not able to. My span of concentration is very low.